Let me compare the two real quick. another video it's your boy Frankie and as you saw by the title of today's video this is a big one we're finally gonna be installing the LED steering wheel for the Kia Stinger but this isn't your ordinary okay. license plate cover looks so freaking sick remember you can find that hoodies jet tags hats banners decals all that and shirts all on kdmbuilt.company.site and man dude you can't go wrong we even got the decal on the back before we got interrupted with that quick commercial break let's get back to today's subject and that's installing one of the rarest led carbon fiber steering wheels that are, you are yet to see on a Kia Stinger. I promise no one else has gone with the style I went with. There's two in Korea, one in the US, but they're not the color I went with. You guys have to see this unboxing. I gotta show you guys real quick how the steering wheel looks right now before we get to putting on the rare carbon fiber LED steering wheel. So this is the original steering wheel in the Kia Stinger. Perforated leather, looks good, nothing much other than the GT badge at the bottom. And then we also have the upgraded logo on the steering wheel but it looks good flows right with the car i mean this interior is already carboned out it looks good we even got carbon in the back yo fam i want to show you guys real quick the bundle we have on the website so when you order the license plate cover bundle this includes the plate cover itself obviously magnetic foam in the back and then it also includes a frame you get to choose what color this one's vacuum black there's white gold as well as stealth black which is matte black so pretty much all you do, sit it on top and it's magnetic. And it also has the covers for the bolts as well, obviously included. But the purpose of this is so when you go take pictures or let's say you're out at the track, you guys don't wanna be showing your guys' license plate numbers. Obviously it doesn't look aesthetic and it doesn't look appealing. So with these, you get to cover it up, give it that nice stealth design, get stung by a Kia looks dope this is the steering wheel obviously the cap this end here is on the back side but i removed it with four bolts five bolts sorry one two three four and five and you could take this piece off so that you could get access to the wiring harness here right so now that we have access to this wiring harness what I'm going to be using to get power source is this yellow cable here. And as for ground, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to cut the black ground cable shorter and I'm just going to be getting ground from this bolt here. Slide this thing through, cramp the black cable on and it should be good to go. You just got to route it in a way where it's not going to be um, getting clinched up. So the ground is done, all set up, firm, and connected to the yellow cable here. This thing's set up, all I have to do is put back and assemble this up together, and then we can put it onto the Kia. First things first, we need to remove the battery, that way we don't get that airbag to blow up in our face. Hey yo, look at this, get stung by a Kia plate, magnetic as well, you can find this at kdmbuilt.com. Make sure you guys go get yourself one. But let's disconnect the battery real quick. Like I said, I don't want to break my face in half with that airbag going off on me. The way installing a steering wheel is very easy, actually. It's one of the easiest mods you could do, and you don't have to pay someone to do it. Like, you could do it from home. You just need to have the proper tools. We have a carbon fiber LED steering wheel in the Kia Optima as well, and we did that ourselves. If you guys haven't seen that video and you guys have a Kia Optima, go check that video out. Press the emergency button. Make sure there's no electricity at all in the system. Nothing at all, pressed again, no lights going off. Next, get something thin so that you could fit in between this hole here. 
So you could push the little clip that holds on the airbag to the steering wheel. So you're gonna push the bolt or whatever you're gonna use. It has to be a thin one with a flat head at the end. You're gonna stick it all the way through, slide it in until you feel like a stick, like a barrier. And then once you feel that barrier, you're gonna press hard and push it in and it's gonna pop the steering wheel off. I mean the airbag off. Hopefully you disconnected the battery. At this point, you guys thought that the airbag was gonna blow up or I was gonna throw up a clip, but unfortunately not. Now it's just for the bottom side. Feed the screw. There's a small little hole at the bottom here. You're gonna push it in and then you're gonna feel that edge again and you're gonna just press it until the whole thing pops off. And ta-da, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Just make sure you disconnect the wire before you rip it into pieces. These things, I used the bolt that had a flat end. And what you're gonna be pushing is these little tabs right here. See this right here? You're gonna be pushing that in and it's gonna release the clip tensions that hold it on to the steering wheel itself. So you're gonna push those in as hard as you can. Same thing for the bottom end here. You're gonna be pushing it in and just like that, you're able to remove this thing. Just like I said, don't pull it off. You don't wanna rip these um, cables up because once you input these things back, it might blow up in your face once you connect the battery. This big ass bolt here, you're gonna need, you might need a breaker bar if you're not strong enough, but I think this might be a size 19. Let me go get. Connect that in. Let's see if we could do it without a breaker bar. Nope, brake bar has to come in. If you have an impact gun, that would be best, but unfortunately I don't have mine today. So with the breaker bar, it should come off fairly easy. I'm just turning the whole steering wheel at this point. Oh, there we go. I use my leg as leverage. Fuck, damn, this shit's fucking on there. This thing seems like it's freaking cross-threaded, I'm not gonna lie. This big ass bolt was removed and from the looks of it, they definitely put some Loctite on this shit. On the Optima, there was not any Loctite, how funny. This one's full of it. But one thing before you remove this steering wheel, as you see, there is a dot there. There's a Sharpie red line as well and then on this end here, I don't know if you guys could see, there is a little rivet on the steering column itself. One at the top, one at the bottom. You wanna line those up with these little cuts that the steering wheel has, the red dot on the top. If not, your steering wheel is gonna be a little bit cricket. It's not gonna look nice, you're not gonna like it. You're gonna have to remove it and you're gonna be upset. So make sure that when you put it back on, or you got your new steering wheel, make sure to line these up or else you're gonna be upset. Steering wheel off, just like that. So I need to remove the paddle shifter since I'm gonna be using my original ones. I didn't opt for the upgraded version. Just like this. Make sure you take off this cable without ripping it. Then transfer the old bolt from the old steering wheel onto this area here. It's done, ready to be installed. Let me compare the two real quick, look at that. That is gonna be a huge upgrade. You know, reverse steps. Plug everything in, make sure everything is connected, fam. I'm talking about everything. You might trigger an airbag to hit your face. So double check, I'm gonna route this all off camera because it is getting dark out and I wanna finish this video installation before it gets dark. Let's see if this motherfucker blows up. Remember you guys, I had a broken stud in the back and it was because it was over torqued 
as you guys remember from the video when we were getting ready for the first ever car show. But we finally fixed it and we replaced the lug nuts with some Muteki style racing lug nuts. And I think they look much better. Let me show you guys the clips. It was kind of difficult to doing it because there's no videos on how to do it with the Kia Stingers that have the rear Brembo blades. You need some lotion. <laughs> Wheels back on. I put on some new lug nuts. That way they're covered up because before it was open face. Now they're closed face. And I think the Moteki race, racing lug nuts look way better. Goes flush with the wheel. Cold start time. This thing looks great. Looks awesome. It flows so well now with all the carbon fiber we have going on inside of the interior. And then also matching now with the red guts that we have. Dude, the vision for the interior is now complete. The final piece is on. Let's go. Do me a quick favor. If you guys are watching this, that means you've made it out to this point. So please hit the like button and also comment down below what was your favorite part or anything. It helps keep this channel alive because Honestly, KDM seems like it's dying down. Not that many people watch the channel anymore or others. I've heard from many other people that are moving on and they've been saying how there's not that much support in the KDM community. It's kind of toxic within its own community and that sucks because we already get hate from other communities as well. The whole purpose of this channel is not for me, it's for you guys. I want to have a platform where people and car enthusiasts or KDM enthusiasts like me can have a way of expressing ourselves and then also feel confident within our own build. Because there's many people lacking confidence because one, it's a Kia, two, it's a Hyundai, or oh, it doesn't make enough power. And the whole point of this channel, like I said, is to help viewers like you know that there is a voice out there. And it's hard for me because I do get a lot of pressure on social media. I get most of the heat, even within the own community, I get stuff. I'll give you guys a perfect example. Um, there's tuner platforms that talk so much shit. If you're not rocking their stuff, they hate you. They'll block you. They'll kick you out of a freaking Facebook group just because you're not rocking their brand. And that's so stupid because in a sense, rather than helping each other grow and expand, you want to seclude yourself and make the community already a shit place compared to what it could be, right? Like I said, I have a vision in mind and where I want to take this channel but without the help of you guys, that will never get there. But enough with the talking, let's throw a GoPro on and let's get some dope POV of how it looks when driving. I'm 
gonna try my best it's raining right now and it's not an ideal time to be full throttle I do have Mickey's in the rear but the fronts are straight up slicks at this point those Toyo proxies go bald so fast I've only had these now for probably four months five months I'm not sure and they're already bald so I'm gonna try my best not to get this thing into a wall but I mean dude just look at the vibe going on in the car all the lights all the distractions in here bro all we have left to do is just have a video playing but i'm not down to do that bro if a cop drives by and sees a video playing on the screen which i can do if you guys haven't seen that video on how to make sure to go watch it i'm just not trying to get a ticket oh i'm trying to go up this ramp yo oh yeah Oh shit, yo, my, my thing wanted to go sideways right now, fuck. Yeah, I am not gonna accelerate. I'm not going wide open throttle. I can feel the back already going to the side. I am not down. And with these slicks, it's just asking for something bad. Oh my God, you see that dude? This thing's just going to the side. Oh, hell no. All right, well, enough with me talking. I know you guys just want to see the flashing lights. You guys want to see like a full canyon run with the steering wheel now or like if you guys want to see a city run or something comment down below where we could go on a sunny day and do some wide open throttle pulls where this thing hits red line and flickers like crazy time to go through a tunnel oh my gosh this thing's gonna be loud fam Straight up GTR, like a baby GTR right here. Sounds just like it. Come on guys, admit it, this thing does sound like a baby GTR. It's just missing 0.5 liters. RPM that the steering wheel could go to to 5,000 since it's too rainy for me to hit red line and swirl to the side because I know you guys want to see this thing flicker red like you guys always see on those other videos of LED steering wheels because the other uh, steering wheel I have on my K5 flickers red but I think my the highest my Optima goes to is 7,000 RPMs and the max RPM set range for that one is 5.5 because I hate hitting red line on that car I don't want a rod to blow out the side of the block or the bottom oh my gosh dude big ass puddle damn there we go that shit was sick dude i think that's the first time i've gotten it to flash like that because that's been at eight thousand 
but I obviously can't reach that without a tune or even with the tune I bet you can't Dude, that's sick. But if you guys did enjoy today's video, please hit the like button, you guys, and also subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.